we're going to get started right now with news you can use. Uh, first thing up, the 10 most affordable housing markets or places to live, actually, overall lifestyle quality in the United States. We're going to go from number 10 to number one. This is a study that was done by the National Association of Realtors, and it's based on a, a small amount of metrics of things that they're looking for. Um, let me give you that list so that you've got it. It is um, affordability. It is, oh, let me find this again here. Hang on. Um, should have this written down. Sorry about that. Uh, it's affordability, it's geography, it's entertainment, it is uh, housing costs, and it is uh, income levels. So we're going to go from number 10 to number one, the 10th most livable city in the United States, Carmel, Indiana. It's outside Indianapolis, suburb of Indy. Number nine, and this is the lowest one in the country in terms of cost, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's the Actually, it's the lowest priced and most livable large city in the United States, Pittsburgh, PA, number nine. Number eight, Salt Lake City, Utah. Keep in mind, we've talked about that. That's in the top three lists of markets that are going down price-wise. Number seven, Fishers, Indiana, which is also a suburb of Indianapolis. Number six, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Number five, Overland Park, Kansas, which is uh, based on nearby Kansas City, Kansas. Number four, Naperville, Illinois. It's a, a suburb of Chicago. Number three, Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, that's home of the famous Mayo Clinic. You guys have all heard of that. Uh, the second most livable city in the United States, Ann Arbor, Michigan, big college town, uh, a great livable place to live. And the number one place, actually, can you guess what the number one's gonna be? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Anybody? Sorry, say that again. Number one most livable uh, place to live in the United States, most livable city in the United States. Anybody want to guess? Affordable or state? just livable? Livable. Overall livability. Probably somewhere in the Midwest, I would say. That's right. Exactly. Anybody else guess? All right. It is Madison, Wisconsin. Um, that sounds about right. University of Wisconsin. So uh, Madison, Wisconsin in 2022, number one most livable place in the U.S. Next uh, thir or Thursday, I'm going to talk about the 10 most affordable beach cities, beach towns uh, for homeowners to live in. Anyway, these... These property, these these locations range from 240,000, the average home price in Pittsburgh, uh, all the way up to 600 and uh, actually now it's down to 632,000 in Salt Lake City. Everything else is in the $300,000 range, 300 to $400,000 range. So, you know, for relatively small dollars um, and, and even at a 6% interest rate, you've got a pretty good mortgage payment. These are great places to live affordability wise, in addition to all the other benefits that are uh, available by living there. So that's uh, that's the first thing we wanna talk about. Number two, uh, I get asked this question all the time. Why, if we're going into a recession, why is this a good time to be a real estate investor? And you guys have heard me talk about this before, but this is the best time uh, to be a real estate investor. And there's a couple of reasons. Um, I'm gonna go through those here this morning with you. Uh, when the economy goes down, people get panicked. Sellers have higher ins instances incidences of uh, the, the things that cause sellers to sell. Death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, family issues, having to move for work. Uh, those are the top eight things. And those are the things that kick in at a higher level during a recession. In other words, people get stressed, they die. You know, uh, people get stressed, there's more divorces. Uh, people have financial stress, there's more bankruptcies. So you see a lot more of that uh, during these, these periods of time. So you'll have, you end up with, the bottom line is you end up with a lot more sellers. Uh, in this particular instance, the recession we're going into now, this artificially induced uh, dampening of demand because of the higher interest rates, which there's an easy fix for, I'm gonna tell you in a second. Uh, that will uh, create less buyers out there. Literally, there are 4 million less buyers here in July, 2022, than there were in April of 2020 or March of 2022. 
and that's because interest rates have gone from 2.7 to 5.8 percent currently 5.7 5.8 .8%. and depending on what happens uh today or tomorrow when the fed meets um you know that number could go higher so more sellers less buyers more inventory on the market um and and be, you know in theory there's less buyers but there's actually the same amount or more buyers those four million people that disappeared from the buyer pool they're they're not their desire to own a home hasn't gone away they still have that same desire they just can't afford it. it's affordability issue so more buy, more sellers more buyers but they can't talk to each other because these sellers are desperate they need they have the same problems they need to get rid of these houses these buyers are desperate to buy but they don't think they can buy anymore because they can't afford the payment at six percent interest that they could have afforded at three so they missed the boat and i've seen this thing happen time and time again in my 20 plus years in business um and the problem is they can't talk to each other they, they don't have anything in common there's a there's a tunnel between them that's all dark and blocked now uh, even though there's more on both sides of the equation, less effective buyers, but more realistic buyers out there. So every month that there are less sales, there are more buyers because they've been sitting on the sidelines. It's what happened during COVID. There, we weren't selling many properties during that period of time just because of logistics. As soon as COVID lifted, all of a sudden sales went through the roof. Everybody came out to buy. Um, those were pent up buyer demand. We've got pent up buyer demand out there right now. They just can't qualify for or afford at the current high prices of houses, the uh, mortgage payments. So two things, one of two things has to happen. Either the prices of the houses have to go down to accommodate the higher interest rate, or there has to be some way of transitioning this tunnel between the buyers and sellers. And that is as transactional engineer, formerly known as creative finance, that's what we do. So we are in the catbird seat. We're the only people that in the middle here have that ability to go through that tunnel and see what's going on. How do you do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways. Um, you know, we teach 15 ways to buy, 15 ways to sell. When you do the math, that means 225 permutations, only one of which is buying with cash and selling with cash or buying with a loan and selling with a loan. You know, that's the typical market, but all of that is just one, two ways of doing things. There's a bunch more, um, and, and that's that's the kind of thing that we teach in our courses is you know how to take advantage and, and monetize other situations to the benefit of not only the seller but the buyer and yourself of course to make yourself uh, you know a handsome profit. Um, one of the things you can do, and I said I talk about this. One of the things you can do, and, and people don't seem to know about it um, because a lot of the people in the industry weren't around 10, 20 years ago. Uh, and when I started 23 years ago, it was a normal thing. It's called buying down the interest rate. So what happens is the seller, um, you know, wants this higher price for their house. The buyer doesn't mind paying for it, but can't qualify for the mortgage. So the buyer will take some of that profit they make from the sale or some of the cash they get from the sale and literally buy down the interest rate for this buyer, lowering that payment. So now you've got buyers that can afford that. And it's a little trick. In fact, I talked to two or three of our real estate agents that sell our properties uh, over the last week or so. And they were like, that's a brilliant idea. Is that, yeah, I remember they used to do that years ago. Is that still doable? They checked with their lenders. Yeah, it's still doable. So that's one way to, to skin this cat. Now, as a whole, society hasn't caught up to that particular way to do it or any of the other transactional engineering techniques uh, that you know we know and use. But that's why it's important for you guys to keep your mind open. You've got to get outside the normal thinking process of buying with cash, selling with cash, buying with a loan, selling with a loan, that type of thing. Because those things aren't going to match up today. They've got to go through that tunnel. Tunnel's dark. It's blocked. You've got the only mine shaft drilling equipment to get through that thing. And uh, we can help you do that. But that's why we really love recessions every property that you can buy and there's a lot more you can buy because there's a lot more sellers and the sellers are more motivated they're more desperate and so you can buy it at a better price but more importantly every house out there has a lot of equity in it at this point in time so you can buy things that have got equity you know if you buy a house you put it under contract it's got 200,000 equity even if the market on the house drops 50 you still got 150,000 equity if it drops 100 you still got $100,000 equity. So you've got plenty of room to work with if you buy right. 
And sellers are starting to get the memo that they're not getting uh, what they were, you know, so arrogant and cocky about even three or four months ago. That that whole thing, that ship has sailed. Granted, there are some sellers that have not gotten the memo yet. Most, however, uh, you know, they see the news, they're panicked. They're all thinking, I'm, I'm a rat, I'm leaving the sinking ship, and I want to get out before my next door neighbor who also wants to sell, but not until the fall. And when you do that, you have a mass number of people who are desperate to sell and it creates its own vortex. It's like fire, uh, a big enough fire. We have you know, tons of fires here in California. We've got one going to Yosemite right now. Those fires get to be a certain size and they consume all the material in their path. The fire becomes the fire in and of itself. That makes any sense. The fire creates more fire because it sucks in oxygen, it sucks in material, and it can actually spread faster than, you know, a man-made fire could uh, when it gets to be a certain size. And that's what you've got going uh, on the seller side of this market out there right now is you've got one or two running for the exits, uh, and that then becomes three or four, then 10 and 18. Next thing you know, you got 47 people all wanting to go through a, a tunnel that's only set up for one. Um, and the best way to do that is they all get small, they all drop their price and they can get through. And that is where you guys, if you keep your heads uh, when you're negotiating with these guys and don't buy into uh, the, the bad memo readers for some of these sellers who've had this old message of, you know, I'm cocky, my, my house, I'm taking bids on my house, you know, it's worth highest and best. There's no highest and best out there anymore. People don't do that. Uh, we were asked recently for a highest and best and we dropped our price by probably fifty thousand dollars and you know they were like shocked and arrogant like how could you possibly do that because it's not worth as much by the time we get done with it it'll be worth 50 less and that good that price is only good till friday and if you don't do that we're gonna drop at 75. um so you know it's like typical seller they took their toys and went home they'll come back but we'll end up buying it at a hundred thousand cheaper um, when they come back. And that's the kind of thing you've got to do. You don't have to get it on this go round. You're going to get a better deal down the road. Yeah. You'd like to have it now, but if you can't, oh, well, just wait. And the sellers are going to get that message if they don't already have it embedded in their brain that there is, uh, there's no room to, to wiggle anymore. You better take what you can get because tomorrow is not going to be as good as today. And the day after tomorrow is going to be worse than tomorrow. So keep that in mind when you're talking to these sellers, you will be able to uh, buy at a, at a much better price. Uh, we do mailings um, and our mailing is, has, a, it's a, has a check that is included with it. Now we're trying to buy rehab houses in one particular area of the country. And so this check is computer generated uh, based on the lower of the Zillow numbers. There was you know, highest, mid and lowest number on Zillow. We took the lowest number and we took a percentage of that. We dropped that percentage about 10 points in the last month and a half. And we're getting more sellers who are calling and saying, I'll take that check. than we were before at a higher offer price. Uh, more of them would call and say, well, you know, this, this is too low, but give me your best deal or whatever. Now that we're getting people literally calling and say, I'll take that dollar amount. Um, and we're like, oh, that was, sorry, that was okay when we mailed it two weeks ago. It's not good today. Now it's down from there. So, and they're, they're desperate enough. They're like, okay, uh, you know, we'll take it. So, um, and, and you'd be surprised. All you have to do is ask. I, I think I told you that about a story a couple of weeks ago that we bought a house, we put in a contract for 20. And then we started really looking at the numbers to see where it would be by the time we put 40 into it. And I think it would have been worth like 85 and, um, you know, we told the guy, listen, we can't really, 20 is, you know, what we thought, but after we looked at the numbers, it's going to be 85, not 95. So, you know, we really can't do this deal. And he bid himself down from 20 to 14. And we told him no. And he bid himself down to $3,500. So he himself walked himself back from 20,000 to $3,500. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll probably, we, we told him even that's too expensive. We're probably going to get it for like 500 bucks. Uh, if we did the deal. So um, that's the kind of thing you can do if you just keep keep cool, calm, collected heads. A lot of these sellers are calling and saying, listen, I just want to get out of my payment. What can you do for me? I just want to get what I'm what I owe the bank, you know, that kind of thing. 
Um, and they're, they're worried, frankly, about, uh, they're worried less about walking away from equity than they are about next month's $726.11 payment. Uh, they can't make that. That's their, their bright, shiny thing that they're concerned about. They're not worried about walking away from 100, 200, 300,000 equity in the house. They just can't make that payment. You know, they want to preserve their credit, that type of thing. So anyway, this is a good time to be in this business. This is arguably the best time to be in the business because buying is going to be easy. Selling is going to be easy. Uh, there's a lot of rehabbers out there, a lot of good contractors that don't have work right now. And you can get things done on time, on budget, and cheaper than you were before. In spite of the fact that everything is more expensive, uh, if you use a little... Um, you know, you rub a couple of brain cells together, you can figure out better ways to do things cheaper. So instead of replacing cabinets or instead of replacing the doors on cabinets, you just restain them and things like that. So you repurpose things. People are willing to accept less than ideal quality, slightly less than ideal quality um, in exchange for a better price or better terms or better payments. And all of that is doable right now. All right, that is it for news you can use today.